Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Current Issue Show on True Chat, broadcasting from Studio 2A in Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm Justin T. Weller. I'm Cam Pierce. And joined today in Urbana, Ohio, is Lance Jackson. So he is joining us via remote video connection today. Uh, new little feature that we're bringing you so that he can be with us via video more often. And uh, we are talking about today none other than the presidential debate. What a surprise. What a surprise. So we all watched it. Did we all watch the whole thing? I did. I did. I did. Excellent. All right. Cam and I, I know for a fact, both did not watch post-debate commentary or listen to post-debate commentary other than like two or three minutes of it. So what about you, sir? Um, as I woke up, I saw bits of it, then fell back asleep, and then saw bits of it when I woke up again. Then finally went to bed about 1.30, 2 o'clock. Okay. So we're going to open with general reactions to the debate as a whole. Um, was it what you expected or not? And what did you expect? And we're going to start today with Cam the Man. All right. Well, hey, thanks, Mr. Justin T. Weller. You don't really have a cool, like, Cam the Man nickname. No. We need to, you had Justin T for a while. Justin T, but yeah, now it's now it's part of your actual persona. So now it's not as much of a nickname as uh, it is just the first two thirds of your name. Gotcha. But regardless, overall uh, thoughts. I you know honestly, um, if you've watched this show before, you know I'm not the biggest Hillary fan that ever walked the face of the planet. But I thought she had a very good debate. Um, a few of the things you know she did, or, or, or kind of going down to Trump's level a little bit, which I think general audience probably reacted well to. I didn't really, but everything it seemed like she had a better answer to. She seemed a ton more prepared, um, and that was the one story that I had actually read um, coming in, or listened to, excuse me, coming in this morning on the radio, is that Trump didn't do anything different for this debate than he did for the primary debates, that he, they didn't want to do anything extra for it. He came in less prepared, and you could tell um, during the second half of that debate. They got into a big thing about stamina and it seemed like he didn't have the stamina or the the knowledge to really keep going throughout the latter half of that debate in my opinion. Um, but the first half the first half of the debate or so uh, where they were talking a lot about the economy, I think he held himself very well. Um, I, I think that's where he is really able to speak to his base as well as speak to the common people. So I think first half was very good for Donald Trump. First half was, you know, good but not her best for Hillary. And then you got into the, the race security issues, and she really did very well, I think. So um, overall win for, uh, for Hillary. I hope that wasn't, you know, your last question. But I just answered it if it was. <laughs> well, was it what you expected? That was my question. Okay, no, that's that's what I that's what I opened with. Okay, so no, it wasn't what I expected for for both guys. Really, I thought I thought Trump was going to go on attack mode, and Hillary was really trying to bait him to do that, uh, but he didn't do it. All right, Lance, what do we think? Um, I was I was surprised at how well Trump did uh, early in the debate. I thought that he actually had some good points and made some um, good one liners. Obviously, I think she has the the facts in this case if you want to talk about who is speaking the truth i think she did a nice job um it was interesting that when he tried to pin her down on the emails she made an apology and said obviously i messed up and let it go at that i think we've been talking about that's the way to handle that i thought that was a strong move on her part um then in the second half all he could do was just continually, uh, uh no way, I didn't, no, I didn't, I didn't say that, just like a little sixth grader in a debate, because he didn't have anything else to say, and then he started in with his um, not speaking the truth and making comments like, you haven't, um, you've been, had, you've had a chance to fight ISIS your entire adult life, which is interesting since ISIS was just newly created, and she's almost 70 years old that she hasn't done anything to defeat ISIS in the last 50 years. But I thought his first half hour was really strong. And then after that, he began to look amazed that he did as well as he did in the beginning. And then the last two thirds of the debate was pretty much what I expected. All right. Uh, well, I tend to agree with a few of the things that you pointed out there, um, particularly uh, the part which I thought should have been something that just, you know, made Camden the happiest man on earth as he did exactly what 
or she did exactly what he's wanted her to do for quite some time when addressed about it. She said, quote, I made a mistake and I would go back and change it if I could. So I don't, I don't know what else you could possibly want. She said, I take full responsibility for it. I won't make excuses. And concise, too. That's yep. the thing we haven't heard before is we've had, I'm sorry, but, and then we go into an explanation about, well, how it's, you know, it, and it is excuse making most of the time, but last night, very good, very good on that. It was, you know, probably one of the, the 30 second highlights that she, you know, won't be playing on her website, but that a lot of the news organizations probably this morning are playing, which is her admitting it and then her moving on, which is what she needs in her campaign, I think, more than anything. Uh, I also pointed out one of her one of her highlights. I think was when she said, "I think that Donald just criticized me for preparing for this debate." <laughs> and yes, I did. And you know what else I prepare for? I prepared to be president, and I think that's a good thing. Um, and that was that was one of the few times when the audience did uh, break the rules and go ahead and applaud. Uh, there were a couple other times, and that one of the other times was when Donald brought up um, the email situation and said that, you know, he'll be happy to release uh, his tax returns if she releases her 30,000 deleted emails. Um, that said, that's when she went into her explanation there. Um, a few other highlights that I wanted to share here uh, were just general observations. First of all, uh, opening the debate, Trump did not thank um, anybody upon starting the debate. Uh, his opponent, the moderator, uh, the university, no one. Um, you know, how big of a deal is that? I don't know. That's for you guys to decide, but it's something that I caught. Uh, obviously, Hillary Clinton did provide uh, enormous thanks to, uh, you know, the people that you ought to pay thanks to, uh, like the university, especially in such a short turnaround time, as well as uh, both people uh, from the debate commission, the co chairs, the Democrat and Republican. Uh, furthermore, Clinton was also the one who started the negative attacks. Um, and Trump, of course, followed suit. Somebody had to start it, uh, but it was her in this case. So again, just an observation I thought was worth uh, sharing there. I made a few other on Twitter, and uh, so did Cam that we'll get to here in a few minutes. Uh, but before we get to that, um, I wanted to talk about if this has changed anything about how you see either candidate. Do you respect them more now, respect them less? Um, you know, what, if anything, has changed in your perception of each candidate with this one? We're starting with Lance. Um, no, it doesn't change my perspective. I think the more important thing is I don't think it's going to change the voting public's perspective. Um, I think the things that Trump did last night play well with the people who are voting for him. And I think the Hillary supporters <clears throat> are going to support her, continue to support her. I'm not sure that either one of them made significant inroads to changing anyone's vote or getting those by changing. I don't mean that they're going to change from Trump to Clinton, but either from a third party candidate to either one of the parties or from an undecided to either one of the parties. Uh, and then for Hillary, the idea of getting millennials out to vote, which is what she needs to do the, if you, for lack of better term, the, the Obama generation, the group that he got out to vote, in both elections that she is having trouble uh, getting excited about voting. I don't think she made inroads to that. So while I think Hillary won the debate and was obviously the more prepared person, I don't think that she gained what she needs to gain to pull away from Donald uh, in the election. So again, do you, this doesn't change your perception about either candidate? Not personally, but, but like I said, not, I don't think that's as important because I'm, I'm pretty much set on what I've done. I mean, I, I think Donald showed what he is, and if that's what you want, that's what you're going to get. Somebody who's not informed, somebody who speaks off the cuff, somebody who stretches the truth and um, doesn't really care what you think and is, going, is out for himself and making sure that he makes money. Like when he says, sure, I was looking for the housing market to drop because that's smart business. I'm going to make money. Um, if that's the kind of person you want to be president, I think he showed that that's what he is. And I think Hillary showed that she is a policy wonk and she is going to keep giving you government at, for the people to try to do 
what she thinks best through government institutions. So neither one of them really played to changing anybody's mind, I don't believe. All right, Cam, same question to you. Has your perception about either candidate changed after last night's debate? Um, for me, Hillary's has definitely gone up. I think she, she held her own um, for the first half, like I said, and then really excelled in the second half. Um, a lot more than I thought she would on security. I think that's probably where uh, the most net gain uh, for me was there for respect for Hillary Clinton. Um, and, I mean, like like Lance said, Trump is Trump. I mean, he's going to tell you that, well, hey, I haven't paid income tax for the last 20 years because I'm smart. I'm a smart guy. I know how to run business. I know I'll know how to he's run the country. He's got a big brain. He's got a big brain, huge brain. It's the best brain in the world. No, I'm just kidding. But it, it, it is one of those things where you know what you're going to get in Trump. Um, he excelled in the area that I thought he would excel in, uh, which is economy. Uh, and and that's pretty much it on Trump. So me personally, it was a net gain for Hillary because I didn't think she'd do as well on security. Uh, but I also think it's probably because Trump lost a lot of steam going into that. Talking for 90 minutes straight, man. I mean, sometimes uh, we used to have issues talking for 30 minutes straight, let alone for 90 minutes, no commercial breaks. you got to go. You can't hide up there. So that's why I think um, Hillary really, really showed her stripes there. She never hid. She, she came at Trump the entire time and stayed on message. I think... Another observation that I made was I thought she did a very good job of staying relaxed, especially after the first several minutes, which was something that I think myself and other people uh, were concerned that she might have issues with, is not appearing too cold, uh, something that you know she's frequently known for doing. Now, that said, I don't think that she was you know this warm, fuzzy creature, but I don't think she's ever going to be that, and I don't know if that's necessarily what you're after in president. But she did have a very, I think, effective way of, in many ways, laughing off what Donald Trump said, um, which was just a very uh, easy way of continually reinforcing that everything he says is ridiculous without actually ever saying that, um, which just from a communication standpoint was probably a really good move. Uh, one of the tweets uh, that, you know, that did very well was uh, when Donald Trump said something like, uh, something to the effect of that, you know, she's the one with the worst temper than him. Um, and she did like a little, you know, smile and shake her head thing. Um, and her account actually tweeted that, like in addition to other people tweeting that, mm -hmm. um, because I think, again, it was a good show of just like, you know, I don't need to respond to that because... She did, just, she did a little shoulder right. shake and went, all right, yeah, and then like went into the, the exactly. actual answer to the question. Uh, which was probably the most notable one she did. But there were many times where he'd say something and she'd be smiling or she'd, you know, say, well, and then go into what she was saying, which I think was a good way of combating his combativeness, uh, which I think, as Cam pointed out, came out later in the debate. Um, I thought I was pleasantly surprised that they both were pretty civil, I thought, throughout the whole thing. I mean, there were all, there's always the moments that you can pick out where, you know, probably Donald more than Hillary um, pulled out pieces of things that were uh, more volatile than others. But at the end of the day, they both, I think it could have gotten a lot more heated than it did, I guess is what I'm getting at. Um, and it didn't. And I thought that was good. Um, I thought it was good that the audience didn't boo. Um, uh, you know, they cheered a few times, which... I was pr probably unavoidable, but for the most part, everybody followed the rules, which was great, other than going over on time. But the fact that they got into good back and forth, I like the new debate format. I'm glad that they're doing it. Um, and that was just kind of the thing that I wanted to close on here was any thoughts about the new format. Uh, I thought this is much closer to the way debates ought to happen. Um, there was more opportunity for them to cross-examine one another, for them to challenge each other, but it was still civil in a way without being manufactured. So uh, what do you think, Lance? Do you like the new debate format? Um, I think it probably plays better towards the American public, which you know I haven't seen the numbers, but if they got the 100 million viewers, it probably plays better towards them because most of them probably don't understand um, what a true debate format is. Um, but I think that helps Donald in the fact that it's okay then to interrupt or make comments towards your opponent while they're trying to speak, which totally just rubs me the wrong way because that's not what happens in a true debate format. So I, I like the format. I think it probably played better 
to the American audience because people that's more like the way people um, have discussions or um, argue uh, among themselves. So they probably felt at home listening to that kind of style or that kind of rhetoric. But uh, for me, I guess as a traditionalist, um, it, it, I didn't like the fact that the interruptions that would continue to take place while the other person was speaking, um, that's just rude. But that's the way people discuss with one another these days. So um, I guess overall, if we're looking for positives for the American public to get involved in politics, I think it was a good thing. I would also note that I think that Lester Holt could have done more to press for answers in certain areas. Um, not that he didn't do a good job overall, I just think that in some cases it felt like he could have pushed harder to get an answer from either one of them, not, I mean, anything in particular. Uh, and also be harder line on the time stuff. I mean, you know, they ran over by 10 or 15 minutes and he could have easily have kept that under control, but he kind of let them, you know, kind of let them go a little bit, which again, not necessarily bad, but that's where you get into more of people talking over each other instead of still having a civilized debate and still having an actual debate without, you know, talking over one another. I think interrupting is a little different if the other person, you know, lets you interrupt, but if you both just keep talking and there were a few times that happened, then it's just kind of like, okay, now we don't know what either person's saying, so what good does this do? Uh, what about the new debate format, Cam? Um, I liked it. Uh, it definitely showed some negatives in both candidates and also positives, I think, in both candidates where it allowed. Um, I like the two-minute rule uh, before I go any farther. I like the, you have two minutes to speak, um, and Lester Holt did get on Trump for that one. I, that, that was the one rule that he really was like, now he kind of had like, it was it was like he had like a spray bottle with a cat. It was like if Trump was trying to talk during Hillary's two minutes, he was like, nope, hey, this is her two minutes. Excuse me, sir, yeah. this is her two minutes. He, he hit tried her, that a couple yeah, times. Yeah, hit him, hit him with that with a couple times, and he finally stopped um, talking when it was, you know, just the two minutes before they opened the discussion. But I think that's kind of the point. I, I would I would disagree with Lance in that in that sense where it's an open discussion. That's That's the point. It's not... Hey, we're going to ask you a question. This is your time to answer the question. If you like that format, then we should go back to the to the old format because that's where I think that shines is we ask a specific candidate a question and they get to answer said question and that's it. And then we move on. Or there's rebuttals, obviously. But then it's just the same thing where, oh, it's another candidate trying to bash their answer or answer the question that they have prepared an answer to. So I liked the new debate format. Um, I, I think it, it did. It did show a couple of things like Trump not having the, you know, the preparation necessary to talk for 90 straight minutes. But I think some of some of Hillary's jokes and some of the things that she tried to do to, you know, relate to the millennial audience a little bit, um, you know, kind of fell flat. Uh, and one thing that I wanted to mention before before the show um, gets out here. Did any of you go to Hillary's website like she she suggested that you do to go for the fact checking? I did that. No. You did not. No. Lance, I did not. No, I did not do that. Interesting, because I did. I listened to her advice. I went to the fact checking website, and it and it had like little emojis for how mad you were at what Trump had said and stuff. So you talked about the millennial thing earlier, and I wanted to bring this up is she tried her darndest to get millennials on the internet, on your computer, go to my website, and you can vote with little emojis and stuff at how enraged this makes you, things that Donald Trump has said about women, about minorities, about what he wants to do with immigration, things like that. It was, it was a lot of his issues that you can really hit and, 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 and talk to millennials about because, I mean, you can't – millennials don't really connect with the whole economy thing as well as they do with that. So that it was a lot of those facts – um, I didn't think the website was set up very well, but I can't really look at that through a through a you know a normal millennial's eye set. And what I saw was emojis, cool graphics, pictures, colors, and I was like, this this is what you need to do to get the millennials on your side. So it was it was an interesting second screen experience that she added onto her website, and she was sure to plug it within the first forty five minutes, and that was big time for me. So that was big time. It was big time. Now I just wanted to get it in before the show was over. 
Uh, well, it's not quite over yet. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> um, I did want to let you know about True Chat Show of the Week this week, which is... The Weekly Screen. Excellent. The Weekly Screen. I was just checking. It's on. I want to make sure it's changed. I don't know how that thing works. Okay. I don't get emails about it, so... You're right. Um, Alex, Ben, and Cam invite you to watch a movie or series with them throughout the week and then hear their thoughts and discuss with them in the comments about the show they took in that week. This one is definitely one of our more kick-back and relaxed shows as we get into some of the best and worst that media has to offer on Mondays by 9 p.m. is when that show is available. Uh, so definitely take an opportunity to check that out. A reminder that new episodes of this show, The Current Issue Show, are available Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Tuesdays you have video shows, uh, that meaning that today is indeed a video show. So if you're listening to the podcast version, head over to our website, truechat.org, T-R-U-E-C-H-A-T.org, to check out the video, or feel free to search the same title at YouTube, and you'll find it there as well. But stay tuned for those video shows. It's uh, something that we're definitely getting into, and hopefully something that you can enjoy as well. Just a reminder that True Chat will be the mortal enemy of speculation, innuendo, and stagnation. We will champion informed opinions and fresh ideas. True Chat will prove that the media can be trusted, relied on, and responsible. We won't join the media elite because we're setting a new standard, a higher standard, the True Chat standard. We'd also like to let you know that if you have any ethical concerns with today's episode, please contact ethics at truechat.org. And if you haven't already, make sure that you download the True Chat app. It is just like the website uh, if you click the next interface in the top left there. Uh, so use that as well. Let us know what you think of today's show, what your thoughts about the debate were on any of our social media. Cam is happy to monitor and reply to that any input and suggestion. On that note, special thanks to Lance for being with us via remote video session. For the current issue show on True Chat, broadcasting from Studio 2A in Cincinnati, Ohio, I'm Justin T. Weller. I'm Cam Pierce. I'm Lance Jackson. As always, thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on the current issue show. Be the change.